Silver has been the best performing commodity of 2016, and in appreciation of our listeners, Palisade Radio and Palisade Research are giving away a free American Eagle one ounce silver round each and every week for the rest of the year. Just visit palisaderadio.com and enter your email for a chance to win. Welcome back to another episode of Palisade Radio. This is your host, Colin Cattell. Just a quick reminder for our listeners, we're still doing the silver giveaway. We're giving away one free American ounce silver round each and every week to our listeners. Just go to palisaderadio.com and sign up. Each and every one of the people that sign up will receive a 15-page report on silver. On the show with us today is a new guest to the program. His name is Dwayne Dahl. He's an expert in the potash space. He's been involved in the potash space for quite some time. And I know potash isn't the sexiest commodity, uh, but there was a few years ago a time when every potash company was on the rise. And we do believe at some point uh, interest will come back into the potash space. In the meantime, uh, we've been looking for companies that don't need high potash prices to Excel in this market, and Dwayne is associated with a company we're invested in called GenSource Potash that we're going to talk about today. Dwayne, welcome back to the program, or welcome on the program. Thank you, Colin. It's a pleasure to be a guest on your show. Dwayne, I think the best way to start here is if you can give a brief background on yourself, how you got involved in the in the potash space, and how long you've been in the potash space. I've been in the potash space now for 25 years. I had the experience in uh, various uh, levels and positions with Campitex Limited. Campitex Limited, if your listeners are not familiar with it, is a uh, marketing and exporting logistics organization that was created by the potash producers in Saskatchewan in the early 70s. Back in those days, there was about uh, 12 companies that owned the 10 mines, and they got together and I created this marketing organization. Um, during my time at Canpatex, I started in the accounting and treasury role, and then I had increasing more senior positions, including heading up credit administration, IT, and sales administration. Eventually, became one of the three uh, C-level, C-suite level executives, and uh, I was also on the board of all of the. Uh, Campitex subsidiaries, which were in, involved in things such as marketing, ocean transportation, terminaling, rail car, and leasing subsidiaries. So, have had uh, pretty much experience in, in all facets of the uh, potash sales process, from uh, you know taking the, the product title of the product at the mine site, moving it in the rail cars. Uh, loading it into vessels at terminals, and then the ocean freight over to the customers. Well, Dwayne, certainly a rich background that you have in the space, and you're more knowledgeable than most people uh, on potash. That's why we've gotten you on the program. Uh, and despite the fact that Palisade Radio is typically focused on gold, silver, and the base metals, always interesting to uh, touch on some other commodities, potash, uh, an agricultural commodity. I want to gauge uh, how important potash is in the global market, uh, what its uses are. And then uh, since you're so close to the space, how bad has it been? You know, the price of potash is down significantly, but how, how, what kind of effect has that had on production, uh, the price decline? What, what have you seen on the ground? Well, I think potash is, is very important, uh, particularly as one of the three key nutrients, the other two being nitrogen and phosphate. Uh, potash has a lot of benefits to plants. It strengthens them, makes them more disease and pest resistant. It helps with the uptake of the other nutrients. And uh, maybe more importantly to uh, listeners is that it improves the taste which is uh, pretty key for uh, fruits and vegetables that, that we eat. I think we can differentiate potash from some other types of commodities. For example, oil, which, you know, there's a lot of pressure on it, maybe due to options to oil. There's solar, there's nuclear, you know, there's uh, wind power. There's really no option for potash. There's no other way to create it. It's not like nitrogen. You can't take natural gas and, and, and do a lot of, create a lot of nitrogen. So potash is, um, I think, pretty key. And uh, where you're going to see more use of potash 
is particularly when people change their diets. Um, if you want to create more protein, and if people are trying to switch now from starch to more protein diets, and particularly in third world and other countries, you know, if you want to get beef or pork or poultry, it requires a lot more plant growth. So you need a ratio of maybe seven pounds, five pounds or whatever of plants to uh, create one pound of meat. So you get significant need for potash in, uh, in that realm. And also you are going to see it as the population grows that, um, you know, we're going to have to grow more. I think some of the uh, world organizations, if you look at what the International Fertilization uh, Association says and the in International in Plant Nutrition Institute, you know, they basically show that most of the future growth in food is uh, is going to be coming from fertilizers and a big chunk from, from potash. Um, you know, the other source probably is from some... GMO seeds or some type of change in the uh, actual plant seeds, but that's uh, going to have some, uh, you know, some of its own impacts and people sometimes have concerns as well. As far as the market, the market is uh, not doing very well right now. As, as we all know, the uh, tonnages have been down and the prices have fallen significantly. But uh, given some of those reasons for, you know, uh, demand for potash going forward uh, that I've just highlighted, it's probably going to come back. And, you know, we'd like to see that uh, with, uh, you know, the eventual potential return of some demand for biofuels, that will also increase the need for potash for uh, plants like palm oil and sugarcane and corn which are used for biodiesel production and ethanol production. Dwayne, what kind of changes have you noticed in the potash space uh, over the last 12 to 24 months? And is there any significance you can place on the merger of uh, POT and Agrium, or is that just a normal business transaction? Well, as, as we've seen, uh, there's been, you know, a, a really a hit to the potash industry. And uh, I think this merger potentially shows the extent that the industry is in flux. You know, generally speaking, uh, the fertilizer sector pundits seem to think that the merger is mainly a, a, or potentially a defensive mechanism aimed at staving off unwanted outside takeover attempts due to, uh, you know, the opportunity created by the declining stock prices. That, that may be the case, as after initial bump in, in stock prices, they seem to have retreated again. But I, I think customers will likely view it as a further concentration of supply in an already small field of sellers. If, uh, you know, if it passes the shareholder in the competition agency reviews, it may create the ability for a, a new uh, entity to shutter further mines and therefore reduce excess production and supply. Any consolidation of, of that sort could create opportunities for companies like GenSource as customers will likely seek to, uh, you know, additional potash sources to reduce dependency on the small group of uh, current suppliers. And Dwayne, I want to talk about GenSource Potash, a company you're now very involved with and that we're investors in and have been for some time. Uh, GenSource is contemplating an entirely new business model in the potash space. Traditionally, potash mines are multi-billion dollar capex underground hard rock mines. Uh, and GenSource is looking at a completely different way of disrupting the industry. Can you talk to our listeners a bit about it? Well, vertical integration was the first thing that interested me in GenSource. The idea of pre-selling the product and scalability of facilities to meet pre-sold demand makes a lot of sense. I've always felt that one of the biggest risks in the potash industry was uncertainty regarding future sales. And this created significant swings in, from quarter to quarter or year to year in the tonnage sold. Not exactly a desirable situation in an industry where 
you know, you have huge mining facilities that are pushing out product, and that product is water soluble and therefore requires covered storage. These large mines, when uh, the covered storage is full, they need to be shut down, and restarting them can cause massive costs and production problems. So, once I started researching GenSource, I thought, you know, this is a this is a good idea to be able to pre-sell the product, have a scalability of facilities to meet just exam, uh, demand that's there, and. I also noticed that they've taken a truly clean sheet approach to potash production. They're looking for ways to not only solve fluctuations in sales, but they basically are doing a a true potash 2.0 approach and looking for solutions to all the industry problems, including, you know, fresh water use, environmental safety, production processes and and cost uh, reduction. And, some of those items, uh, I think, are truly have, uh, you know, evolutionary in the sense that um, the gen source approach, they won't be using any fresh water. Um, that can be for a lot of people, the, the amount of fresh water that's used uh, in this day and age is, is a very big issue for a lot of uh, farmers and, and people who might be close to the uh, potash mine and instead they'll be using you know brackish water from you know Blairmore underground uh, they're not going to have any underground mining or any brine or tailing brine ponds or tailing piles this will be uh, quite an, an environmental advantage in the sense that you know, all those tailings that are currently at, at mines are stored above ground and there's no real use for them. And uh, at some point, you know, environmentally, they're likely to become an issue because they're not having the underground mining, because they're not having the ponds and so on, that'll create a lot more uh, or a lot less safety issues. And I think that mm-hmm. that will be a big benefit to GenSource. The other thing where because of the scalability of production and, and that, and because of the uh, technology that they're using that was similar to directional drilling in the oil industry, you know, their production costs are going to be low, low and uh, that will likely make them, you know, very viable in the future. Dwayne, thanks for that. And, uh, you know, I want to I want to kind of sum up here by talking about Saskatchewan. Uh, for Canadians, it's something they're familiar with. For people in other places of the world, it's a, a, a quiet region that not that many people know the name of, but it's really the epicenter of potash, certainly in North America. And it's somewhere that you've worked and you've put quite a bit of your time into. What is it that makes Saskatchewan so important uh, in a global on the global scale when it comes to potash production? Well, Saskatchewan has a lot of the uh, potash reserves. There's almost 50% of the world's recoverable potash reserves are in Canada. And other than a bit in uh, New Brunswick, where they're no longer a producer, it's all in Saskatchewan, basically. Uh, Saskatchewan is, the location of it is good. There's a big demand for potash in the U.S., where they only have about 1% of the recoverable reserves. China only has 2% and Brazil has 3%. So um, Saskatchewan is very important to the uh, to the world as, as a supplier of potash. The ore here is quite rich and costs of production are relatively low. And it's basically hundreds of years production still available. In Saskatchewan, we have a resource-friendly government and reasonable royalties, so um, it is it's important. And you know, governments naturally want royalties and taxes to be in balance with creating an environment for you know business, and they seem to be doing a good job of that here. Well, fantastic, Dwayne. I really want to uh, thank you for coming on the program today. For any of our listeners that are interested in finding out more about Potash or Dwayne, uh, the best place to go would be gensourcepotash.ca. And once again, that's a company that we're shareholders in, and uh, we've uh, participated in both of the last financings and are very optimistic. Uh, Mike and Rob is the leadership there, and now with Dwayne, are putting together 
Uh, Dwayne, thank you so much for coming on the program, and we'll certainly look to get you back on in the near future. Thanks, Colin. Have a great day. think you understand the junior mining sector and you think that the participants in the mining sector, junior mining sector, are good people and kind people, hit the bit. And the world is always going to need raw material. It's going to need copper and gold and nickel and so forth. Totally destabilized. Hey, hey, troll, did you hear what's going on in Yemen? Are you too stupid? 